I am Lamont at large today. I am at the Lincoln Memorial Cemetery here in Lincoln, Nebraska. I'm here to visit the grave of Tina Brandon. You may have not heard of the name Tina Brandon, but you've probably, more than likely, you heard of the movie called Boys Don't Cry, starring Hilary Swank. Uh, it was based upon a true story, uh, which is Tina Brandon's story. Uh, basically, Tina was a woman. She was born here in Lincoln, Nebraska on the 12th of December, 1972. And... Uh, from what her mother said, her growing up, she was always a tomboy. She later in her teenage years would dress up as a boy, talk like a boy, and continue to do so throughout her very young adult life. She had several girlfriends who they claim in uh, video interviews that they thought she was a man. Even the ones that slept with her said that, oh, no, she's a man. Well, come to find out, she wasn't a man. She was playing a role. She was lying to a lot of her girlfriends in the fact that she really was a woman. But the story doesn't just stop there. So she's going around you know, pretending to be a man, living her life as a man. Um, she was also going around uh, cashing forged checks. That was the way she made money to buy gifts for all the girlfriends she had because, you know, Tina Brandon living her life as Brandon Tina, reversed her name, had a lot of girlfriends. And when you got a lot of girlfriends and you're buying them stuff and taking out to dinner, well, you're going to have to come out with a lot of money because you're not going to be able to support this uh, player-type lifestyle. So she would go around forging checks to uh, opening up uh, fraudulent uh, bank accounts. So eventually she got uh, caught and arrested. Now that's where the kind of house of cards basically falls in on her. Uh, rumor goes around town that when she was booked, she was booked as a woman. She was in the woman's side of the jail. And her girlfriend at the time didn't believe this and just threw it off as a rumor. Well, two of, two of Tina's friends, two guys, one by the name of John Lauder and Tom Neeson, they were kind of wondering, well, what's going on here? Is this, uh, is Brandon really a woman? They didn't know what to do. So one night they invited her over to the house. And so they confronted Brandon Tina as they know Tina, her, his name, her name to be, excuse me. They said, Hey, listen, Brandon, uh, there's a rumor going on that you're really a, you're really a, a woman. And Tina denies it. Like, she says, no, I'm a man. What are you talking about? So they grab her, uh, force her into the bathroom, and they forcefully take all her clothes off and to prove to her girlfriend right in front of her very eyes, no, this is not a man. This is a woman. And that's not where it stops there. So they, they grab Tina and they kidnap her. They throw her in her car and they take her out to a hog processing plant and they start beating her and pummeling her on the ground until she was bloody. And after that, they uh, took turns brutally raping her and then they beat her again. So they take her back to the house and they tell her, if you call the cops, uh, we're going to come back and kill you. So immediately she, she goes to the cops and she calls the sheriff's department. She goes in for an interview and she tells them that I've been raped. She talks to a Richardson County Sheriff's department deputy by the name of Charles Locks, who I believe was the uh, sheriff at the time. And instead of him taking a report of a woman who's been raped, uh, he basically doesn't believe her. He says that, uh, you know, he doesn't, he doesn't believe her because it seems kind of weird that a woman who's living her life as a man was raped by two people, blah, blah, blah. He declines to arrest them. He does interview them, but doesn't file charges against them. So Lauder and Neeson, they're, they're pissed. They're upset. And now they're after her. They tell, they tell all of Tina's friends, they said, hey, listen, tell Tina when we find her, like, basically that we're going to get her. You know, threaten her in so many words. So she goes out. Tina leaves town. She goes to a nearby town in Nebraska called Humboldt. And she goes and she hides at a friend's house. 
a friend by the name of Lisa Lambert. So she goes to her friend Lisa's house, and at the time, Lisa had a couple roommates, and uh, one of them was uh, a man by the name of Philip Devine. So word gets around that Tina is at Lisa's house. So that's when Neeson and Lauder develop a uh, plan to go out there and, and take care of business. Now, according to the court testimony, this is the story as follows. Tom Neeson and John Lauder, they, fi they find the house where Lisa lives. They barge in through the door and they, and they start ransacking the house. Where's Tina? Where's Tina? And under a bunch of blankets, Tina was hiding. So they stand her up. John Lauder pulls out a gun and shoots her. And then she falls back on the couch. And according to the court testimony, they weren't sure if she was dead because she was kind of still twitching. So Tom Neeson pulls out a knife and starts stabbing her to death. So after she's dead, they look around the house and they figure, oh, okay, uh oh, we got, uh, we got witnesses. So they shoot and kill Philip De Devine and Lisa Lambert. Uh, Lisa Lambert had a 15 month old baby, I believe. Uh, they spared his life. And eventually they were tried and convicted uh, of three, three counts of first degree murder. Tom Neeson eventually to escape the electric chair in Nebraska. He testifies against John Lauder that it was his plan. He was the shooter, so forth and so on. And Tom Neeson was tried and convicted and sentenced to three life sentences. And John Lauder was sentenced to die via the electric chair in Nebraska. But currently they don't have the electric chair, so they have lethal injection. And then to this very day, that's where he is right now. So we're going to go uh, visit uh, Tina's grave really quickly. And uh, this here is the grave of Tina Brandon, December 12, 1972 to December 31st, 1993. I don't want to get my shadow in the shot, but as you can see, inscribed is daughter, sister, and friend. It's amazing how long it's been since... Uh, she was killed. Uh, you know, I, I read a lot about murders and particularly uh, murders that interest me are the ones that, you know, from the, from the 60s, 70s and 80s and just kind of before the Internet was around. And um, one of the more, I uh, don't know a word to put it, just one of, the, one of the more senseless murders I've ever read about in my life. Because this, this woman wants to be a boy, wants to be a man, whatever, and you're going to defile her like that. You know, I, I've, I've, you know I've, I've given up on, on why people do disgusting, horrible things like this. But that was, you know, listen, Tina didn't live a, per a perfect life. That's fine. I, I don't either. I strive to be a good person. Sometimes I fail. And, you know... It wasn't like she was going around uh, doing disgusting, evil things. I mean, you know, trying to fool somebody into believing that you're a boy or a man, you know, okay, that's not a good thing. But uh, no, she did not deserve what happened to her, and neither did uh, Lisa or Philip. And uh, I trust and believe, I hope that execution of that punk that did this to you uh, happens uh, very, very soon because he does not deserve to be breathing on our, in our, on our, on our planet. So rest in peace to Tina Brandon. And I'll tell you what, rest in peace to Brandon Tina. Hey, if you want me to call you Brandon Tina, I'll do it. I, I, hey, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. All right, rest in peace to Brandon Tina. If that's, if that's what you, that's what you want. Okay. All right. Very good. All right. I'm out of here, guys. I'll catch up with you on the next blog. All right, peace out.